On most all charting platforms, assets can be compared to each other. Comparing the S&P 500 to itself would of course be a perfect correlation, displayed by the correlation coefficient indicator as plus 1, and it would be a very similar situation with the SPY ETF that is meant to track and replicate the movements of the S&P 500 index though in reality there will be some slight variations from time to time between the ETF and the index it's meant to track. So even two assets like this won't always have a perfect plus one correlation. On the other side, the inverse S&P 500 ETF with the ticker symbol SH is an ETF meant to replicate the exact opposite movements of the S&P 500 index. And generally this objective is achieved, but trying to replicate the exact opposite movements of an index can be more difficult at times, so it's not realistic to always have a perfect negative 1 correlation. Sometimes high positive correlation is not desired, since it can result in more exposure to risk. Resulting in diversification favoring some negative correlations, the combination between assets from all financial markets is virtually endless. So in this series, we'll look at examples that can demonstrate cases of highly positive and highly negative correlations. And since correlations don't always remain constant, we'll look at realistic cases where the correlation between assets can change over time and result in convergences and divergences between their movements. Various charts will be covered from different markets and time ranges, so no matter when you watch this or which particular charts you choose to apply the correlation coefficient indicator on, information presented in this series can still generally be applicable and useful to you.